This video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies, and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin has very low fees, lower than many of the other crypto exchanges in the market. You can also stake your cryptocurrencies and keep 100% of the rewards. There are no fees. Sign up with OKCoin, link in the description. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. With me today is a very special guest, Didi Taihutu, who, of course, is the dad uh, within the Bitcoin family. Didi, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. Uh, the honor is all mine. It's a pleasure to be on your channel. And uh, I'm always in for talking some Bitcoin, blockchain and life. So, uh, again, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I I've been so intrigued by you and your family because you guys are living off of Bitcoin, which I think is so cool. And I want to get to know you better. Can you tell us about you know, where you and your family are, are originally from? That's a long story, but my, my grandfather is from Indonesia, so um, I have some Indonesian roots, the, Malo the Maluku Islands, we call them, uh, but I was, grow I was born and raised in the Netherlands, so um, yeah, we, we lived my whole life, my kids grew up in the Netherlands, Bali, and the last five years they've been growing up all over the world, but my wife and I, we met each other in the Netherlands as well, yeah. And how many kids do you have? Is it three? Three, three daughters. The oldest one is Jolie. She's 16 years old. The second one is Juna. She's 14 years old. And the youngest one is Jessa. She's now 11 years old. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. I mean, you, of course, have a beautiful family. And I know you guys have been featured on TV shows. And do you get recognized as you travel? Like people are like, hey, you're the Bitcoin family. You know, are you, are you getting yeah. recognized? <laughs> It's, it's nowadays, yes, the first two years was okay. But now this year, since that the blur and has started, yeah, it's gone a little bit insane. So um, <laughs> almost every day here in Portugal, some people recognize you, want to make a selfie, want to make a picture with your car, want to be, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's like you're famous in a niche market. You know, people always ask me, how, how does it feel? It's like, if now the world champion, Thai box would pass by on the beach, I wouldn't recognize him because I'm not into Thai boxing. Right. Everybody that is into Thai boxing will be, wow, that's the world championship, Thai boxing. So for us, it's the same. In the normal world, nobody recognizes you. But if you, if crypto people see you, they will always recognize you because, yeah, you, you are featured in the media a little bit. So, um, yeah. Very cool. It's getting more and more. More it's a and good more, indicator yeah. that, the, that the industry is growing tremendously. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever worry about like, you know, the lack of privacy maybe as the market grows and things become more mainstream? Uh, no, not really. You know, we, we, we promote a decentralized lifestyle. We promote a decentralized world. I support a decentralized world. Um, you know, I want to be as decentralized and transparent as the blockchain. So for me, there's nothing to hide. I'm always there to talk to people. I'm, I'm, I'm in it to educate people. I want to show other people what is possible in life instead of running the hamster wheel. So to do that, you need to speak to people. You know, you need to speak. And then for me, it's connecting with people that gives me a lot of energy. And um, so no, not, not really, not really. If it is too much, like the last month, it's um, we are in Europe and then you have the summer holidays in Europe. And then a lot of hot Dutch people come to Portugal uh, so it became a little bit too much, like knocking on your door, screaming your name. Uh, and that's why we moved now into this small house in nature a little bit. Um, so a little bit more distance from city life. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Sure. And, and on that note, you know, the genesis of the idea of you going all in on Bitcoin, you wanted to leave your the business you ran and leave kind of the rat race, right? Was that the idea behind going all in on Bitcoin? Yeah, that was the, only, the one and only reason, you know, I lost my mother when she was 40 years old, years old, I was 24, I became a workaholic because of that. And during that time, I built up a few companies, and I started the family of three daughters and but I didn't see them that often. Mm -hmm. And then um, a year or five ago in 2016, my father died of cancer, after a, a year um, when he was diagnosed and you know, that opened my eyes. That was like, wow, my mother was 48. My father is 60. I'm almost 40 now. 
what do I want to do? Do I want to keep living this life every day again and again and again? Wake up, make sandwiches, bring the kids to school, uh, go to your work, come home, watch television, uh, prepare a meal, and like that, that red race. And, and the answer to that question was no. I was I was I was done. I uh, I got a huge burnout after the uh, funeral and the uh, in the inheritance and all that stuff. And and then I said, okay, this is it. Let's stop. Let's go on a physical retreat, like three months traveling with the kids to Thailand to just you know get my energy back to get my life back on the uh, on track. And during the traveling, we discovered, wow, this is beautiful. We don't have cars. We don't have luxury. We don't have a house. We are free to do what we want. We meet beautiful people, good food, other cultures. And that is when the the like the, the button really switched in my head. Like, I want to continue this lifestyle. I don't want to go back to the big house. I don't want to go back to the big cars. I don't want to pretend to be somebody else yeah, walking around with a mask through life. And uh, I want to be myself. I want to be happy with my family. And, and that was the, 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 the last trip that, uh, that we decided, okay, let's just fly home. Let's sell the house, let's sell the cars, let's sell everything we have. Uh, let's go all into Bitcoin because, you know, I already mined Bitcoin in 2013 and those few Bitcoins I kept over, they were increasing in value. So we let, let's just do it. We don't care about money anymore. So let's see what happens. Let's support this revolution. Well, and that is what we did. <laughs> well, I have to ask because I'm married, I have a daughter and it was it's amazing that your wife she also saw the vision and she was with you to, to do this. You know, we, we decided as a family, we talked a lot about it because we, we already talked about it before the whole Bitcoin adventure. Is this everything? Mm. Is this life? You know, these conversations you have with your, with your wife. And, and at the end, we always needed to agree, but we are more happy when we go on holiday. We work our ass off like 52 weeks a year to go two weeks to a beautiful place where we feel happy. So why not turn it around? <laughs> why not sure. spend 50 years in the place you feel happy and two weeks in the place where you don't feel happy? <laughs> and, and then we discussed it and we talked with a lot of older people and they're all like, yeah, but yeah, you need safety. Yeah, you need a pension. And I already saw in life, you no, know, my mother died when she was 48. My father died when he was 60. Which pension? You need to enjoy life now when you're 40, 30 to the fullest. And then we just decided, okay, if we want to make the future better for our kids, we need to break the system. We need to lead by example. If I keep running the hamster wheel, my daughter will start to run the hamster wheel as well. So the only way to show my daughter is not to read a book about it or to give her a coaching session, no, to do it. We as a parent have the responsibility to lead by example and to show the kids what is possible in life. And that is what it made easy for my wife. She wanted to lead by example as well. We all were sick of that life, you know, that you only focus on accumulating wealth. Yeah. While you should be focusing on accumulating happiness. So, and because of that, we decided let's lead by example. Let's start to accumulate happiness and let's focus on that. And let's see what happens, you know, and then, and then you just decide, let's do it and let's try it. And if it doesn't work, you just change life again. It's not that you can never change back. You can always change back. And, and that was, uh, yeah, it was like we slowly grew into it as a family. And um, that, yeah, I was just lucky to have a, a beautiful wife that also uh, had the same mindset. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just, just amazing. And, and to your point, happiness is what's important, right? Yes, you can accumulate things, but you have to be happy and at the end of the day because you can have everything if you're not happy it's it what, what's the point um so i have to ask when you first did this as a family were your other family members and friends like didi what are you doing are you crazy or were they supportive no most of them they were like hey, you're crazy because they knew me as an other person Hmm. I had been running around with that mask. You know, I was DDD with the companies and sharing bottles of Belvedere in clubs, you know, and being the man. And um, they didn't, they were used to seeing me playing on the beach and building a sandcastle and making a selfie on that. You know, that was a, a different style of DDD. So most people said, this is going to be short term. They all thought, you know, I fell on my head because I lost my father and mother and, and I just didn't know anymore what I was doing. Uh, but I exactly knew what I was doing. I didn't want to have that life anymore. And 
after a year, they understood exactly what I was doing and then they became supportive. And then they were all like, wow, yes, you took the right step. We should have done the same. Maybe we should do the same. And, and slowly more and more people um, you know, start to convert wealth into Bitcoin. And, um, and by that now have a different lifestyle as well. But um, of course, in the beginning, it was a shock. You know, if, if your best friends, they tell you, what are you doing? You're not going to sell your house. You're not going to live on a campsite. Well, what are you doing? You have kids. But, you know, yeah, we, we, we just had a very strong feeling that we were doing the right thing. And then mostly when you follow the feeling down here, you know, <laughs> that's yeah. the right feeling. The feeling down up here, that's the wrong feeling. That's that's so we, we, we just decided to listen to the to the gut feeling. And that was a good one. Um, so how do you currently earn a living? Because um, I'm sure people are wondering, well, you have your a lot of your wealth in Bitcoin but how do you pay for things day to day? How do you pay for bills, for hotels, whatever it may be? And, and do your kids go to school, given that, you know, you travel and, and things like that? Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a good question. You know, it's, it's, it's my philosophy is that um, the 90s was, was the age that you physical needed to work to earn money. Mm -hmm. I think we are now living in the 21st century where you can let the money work for you. You know, we have an evolution of technology um, called artificial intelligence and the blockchain. And if you combine those two, you can have your capital work for you. You can have bots trading your Bitcoin that do a way better job than you self will ever do. Um, and we in humanity always fight the evolution. Always. We always fight evolution. We fought the evolution of Internet. We all thought, nah, internet is not going to be it. We will be sending mail every time. We are not going to use email, you know, and we fight evolution of technology. And now again, people are fighting the evolution of technology. And I'm just running up front and using the technology to live a free life while I let my capital work for me. So my bots work 24 seven. They never complain. They never ask for a free day. They never are pregnant. They are never sick. They never have any kind of flu. They just trade my Bitcoin. So they multiply my capital and of which I can live. And at the same time, I make daily YouTube videos, which is my passion. I love to create content. So um, there is an income from YouTube. Um, but the biggest part of that goes to charity. So the biggest amount that we make with YouTube goes to uh, building schools, building orphanages, uh, just supporting other charities with Bitcoin. So, yeah, we live fully on crypto. We don't have a bank account. So everyday spendings, we do all or with peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin payments. That is wow. my preferred way because then you support the miners and the community. And if we don't succeed in that, or if we are lazy or too lazy to find the, the store and accept Bitcoin, uh, then we use the crypto debit cards, you know? You, you, they convert Bitcoin into the local currency where we are. And um, so it's it's not that difficult anymore. In the beginning, it was more difficult. Mm -hmm. We still use a lot of bit refill coupons. So if we want to go to the McDonald's, we buy a McDonald's coupon on bit refill with our Bitcoin. Wow. And then we use the coupon on the telephone to pay the McDonald's. So we try to be very creative in spending the Bitcoins. And um, But I think it will take another five years before you know we can spend Bitcoin just the way we spend euros or dollars or Thai baht. You know, it's, um, it's, it's slowly evolving. And people all seem to understand and agree now, uh, at the end, we will all be able to pay with Bitcoin or Litecoin or any other cryptocurrency. Yeah, absolutely. To your point, like it is it is on the rise. I'm seeing ATM, Bitcoin yeah. ATMs. I'm seeing my local store saying you can pay with crypto here. So it's happening um, and it will be much easier for sure, like you said. It will, and I'm, I'm I'm working on it every day. You know, every day when I go to a beach bar, if, if for, for example, in Portugal, I found this beautiful house on Airbnb. I went to the house. I said to the guys, I'm the Bitcoin family. Is it possible I pay with Bitcoin? So the guys, wow, that's cool. I heard about it. They check it. They fact check my story and everything. And they're like, okay, you can pay me in Bitcoin. So I rent this house now for a year with Bitcoin. Then I go to the beach bar. I tell to the guy, give me a rum coke. I love rum coke. And I drink that one. And after a few days, I tell him, he asks, who are you? The Bitcoin family, Didi, blah, blah, blah. And then I ask him, can I pay you as well on Bitcoin? You know, and then educate the people. And by now, the house owner accepts Bitcoin. The beach bar accepts Bitcoin. The sailing clubs accept Bitcoin. The fish restaurants accept Bitcoin. So I create Bitcoin adoption around me, which makes life for me more easy. 
And in the end, they are all happy because they start to accept Bitcoins because they see the increase of value as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really nice game to play. For sure. So I have to ask, because I have a daughter and I'm about to put her in, in pre-K, you know, how, how do your kids uh, do schooling and, and things like that? So the oldest two, they, they went, the first years of their life, they went to school. The youngest one, she has never been to school um, because when we started to travel, she was only five years old. Mm-hmm. Um, so we homeschooled. We first unschooled them because we were of the opinion that everything they learn on the traditional schools is preparing the kids for the past. And mm-hmm. I want to prepare the kids for the future. So I don't want to fill their heads with negative emotions about the war that happened 50 years ago, 100 years ago. You know, they can know that it happened, but they don't need to know the details. I I would love to fill their heads with the internet that changed the whole world, or you know, or the blockchain that is changing the whole world. So we prepare them for the future. So the the first year we we unschooled them, no schooling at all, so that they could de-stress from the system. Um, And then we start to homeschool slowly. And now we are homeschooling, plus we are using a school um, created by Digital Nomads. It's called Galileo, where the kids check in every day for 30 minutes and they get guidance of teachers that want to teach the kids something that they want to learn. So it's not like forcing children to learn that, that, that. But what do you want to learn? Oh, I want to learn about stars. Okay, let's talk about stars. Let's take this app. Let's go look at this. You know, it's an other way of... um, preparing the kids for a different decentralized future and you know my kids um most people educate their children in a traditional way because they think um that that is the only way for them to succeed in life to accumulate uh, you know wealth uh and for me my kids it's a little bit different of course they they all own bitcoin so if in five years time bitcoin goes to uh, a million us dollar let's say uh, then my oldest daughter will be 20 years old and she will have a Bitcoin. She will be a millionaire and she can have the capital again, work for her. So we, we think different. We think different. So, yeah. And, and to your point, um, I think you're ahead of the curve here because even my own daughter, yes, she's doing a lot of online learning. You don't necessarily need to be in a classroom. A lot of the information is on the internet and, and the, the, the courses and whatever they want to learn and so forth. So I'm in agreement with you there. I think I think the online education is way ahead and way better, yeah. and um, it's more um, precise than the offline because you cannot print new books every year. That's too expensive for the schools. There is not enough money in the government that goes to the school so they can buy books every year. So the online that is always you know correct in time so that is exactly what is happening now so um i think it's 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 very important for the kids to be uh, educated online as well you know i i believe that the social context they need to be offline and i think the schools need to play a role in that have kids socially emotional evolve as a human being uh, but when it comes to um uh, getting knowledge of theory, then I think the online uh, is, is way better than, than a teacher that needs to st- talk to 30 kids in the classroom. I think sure. a one-on-one coaching session of an hour has more, uh, you know, more output than, than the traditional uh, one teacher talking to 30 kids. Yeah, absolutely. And that is, of course, you know, you mentioned some of the common problems that we have with the current education systems with costs, uh, teacher to student ratio, teachers unhappy with their pay. So that system is currently, it's not working well. And I think it's its going to be changed. Exactly. And if you decentralize the world, and if you believe in a decentralized world, and if you believe in peer-to-peer, then education will be peer-to-peer as well. It will be in a form of exchanging value. And I think a lot of people have knowledge and they can exchange their knowledge with children and then, and they can ex- again exchange value with the teachers, you know, and that comes in the form of cryptocurrency or whatever. And then you have a complete decentralized uh, ecosystem for for education, I think. And yeah, I think that's that's what it is all about. We as a community supporting each other and 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 learning things in life. Absolutely. So I have to ask, how did you first come across a Bitcoin? Did someone tell you about it? Did you read about it on a forum? And how did you end up mining Bitcoin? It was in 2013. Um, I was still running my company, and I got. Um, 
an internship from a from a school and the guy came to the office and he said i need to do an internship um i said okay what do you need to do i had an it company and he said yeah i can just choose the subjects what what kind of subject do you want uh, what do you think about bitcoin i said bitcoin said, well, what is that and he said yeah you can uh, become very rich of it and it will uh, disrupt the monetary system and it was a young guy he was like 17 or 18 years old and I'm like, okay uh, let me read tonight so at the evening i went on the internet i said okay that's cool ah so i called the guy i sent him an email said you have the internship um, let's build some mining rigs and he was completely happy can i really build mining rigs yes and then i invited some other friends as well and then we just invested about uh, 30,000 euros or so $40,000 in uh, building mining rigs. So we ordered the motherboards, the graphical card charts, you know, and all that stuff. And, and then we, we emptied one office and we started to mine Bitcoin and Dogecoin later. And that was the start. And that was the start. So I started to mine uh, Bitcoins. Yeah. And then I, on, after you get into the industry, you start to read the forums and everything. You know, I got into it because I thought, okay, a revolution, that is what I like. Um, and becoming a millionaire, that was at that time in my life, still my goal, you know, I, ha- I was running companies, I wanted to become a millionaire as soon as possible. So that was what drove me into Bitcoin. I mean, then when you start to re- read more, learn more, and you understand it's not about even the money only, it's really a revolution. This is really one of the biggest, like, revolutions I think we have ever experienced in, 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 a, in a harmless way. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, to your point, in a harmless way, uh, changing money, changing store of value, and, and the, uh, just like you said, decentralized uh, economy. Um, so yeah. that's pretty amazing. So I don't know if you can answer this question because it's obviously a bit personal, but are you a Bitcoin millionaire? Do you continue to buy the dips? Obviously, you probably can't say how much Bitcoin you have, but are you a Bitcoin millionaire? <laughs> Uh, we are still all in bitcoins. I don't own a million bitcoins. <laughs> okay. So uh, I don't well, own a million bitcoins. So I don't consider myself <laughs> as a bitcoin millionaire because then I should be owning one million bitcoins. I don't do that. Oh, so uh, I see. What, I see what you did there. I see what you did. <laughs> well, are you keep? Uh, do you keep buy? The, do you buy the dips? Like like when it, the price drops. Um. So seventy percent of our our capital is on cold storage. Mm-hmm. Uh, as on hardware wallets, 30% I um, trade, I have bots trading, I trade myself and I do swing trades and I play the cycle. Um, so the four-year cycle for me is still valid. And every time when we uh, bottom out in the indicators that I use, um, uh, I buy, I buy. And every time when we top out with the indicators, I sell. And that's how we multiply the Bitcoins like every month, because um, if you trade the, for, for example, the weekly charts or the day charts, you don't need to be on the screen like 20%. Right. Um, you can still, in a very cool way, um, multiply your Bitcoins. You know, I, I created my own indicator. It's called the Didi Bam Bam indicator. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and that one tells me when to buy and when to sell, you know, and, 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 and I just follow that. And uh, because I just don't have the time anymore to really manually trade every day. Sure. Um, I have to ask, you know, in the early days, not now, but in the early days when you made the move to Bitcoin, were you ever worried that governments may ban Bitcoin and that might put you and your family at risk? No, we never had a doubt, hmm. but of course it crossed the mind. But we, we, when we took that step, we just decided to never live in fear anymore. You know, hmm. mostly when you grow up, you make all the decisions because of fear. You don't make a decision because you want to have something, but you make the decision because you're afraid of losing that part or you're afraid of doing something wrong. And, and, and we just decided, like, let, let's just go for it. Let's just do it. Let's just go for it and don't worry about it. Let's say if we lose everything, if Bitcoin crashes to zero or if Bitcoin is like, you know, um, forbidden by the government, which, of course, is not possible, um, then we start over again. Then we start just like any other person that comes from school starts his life. You go find a job, you work a few months, you get a mortgage, you buy a house, you work some more and you're back on track you can always start that cycle again. Um, but, you know, that, 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 that makes you lose the fear of losing everything. And um, we never had doubt on Bitcoin and we never had 
the idea that governments would even want to, um, you know, forbid Bitcoin. I think for me, it was always very clear. This was the solution for the problem we were facing. This was the solution for including all the people into a monetary system in a way that has never happened or was possible before. Yeah, and now, now people with a telephone can be connected to uh, the monetary system. And, and I think that, that no government wants to keep people poor. Uh, saying this in a sarcastic way, yeah. because of course <laughs> they want people to stay a little bit poor, but you know they also need to admit that the world is changing. We are going digital slowly and people need to be included. Uh, do you have a big, well, let me back up. Do you feel we are still in a bull market and do you see another run up maybe a double peak like we saw in 2013? And do you have a Bitcoin price prediction for this year? Yeah, definitely. We are not um, by far in the bear market. We are in the bull market. We are going to be uh, peaking above 100,000 US dollar, I think before the end of the year, um, between November and December is my guess. It's a four year cycle. Um, every time, every time it is December, 2014 was December, 2017 was December, 2021, I think, will also be December. And I think we're fighting the logarithmic growth curve midline that is now around 50,000 US dollar. There's the same line we have been fighting in 2017's bull run. There's the same line we've been fighting in 2013 and 14's runs. So for me, we are going to break this line. If you look at all the indicators, if you look at all the fundamentals, um, this is not the end. This is just the start of the last push. The fifth wave, in my opinion, and I think that fifth wave will be high above the 100K. Um, so for me, no, I'm still all in. Um, the moment that the 12 multiple, for example, one of the indicators um, gets into the red box on the top, that will be a moment that I start to think, okay, now we could be topping out and then maybe I will start to exchange some Bitcoins into stable currencies um, to buy the dip again. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts on just Bitcoin's adoption that has been growing? I mean, corporates are putting on their balance sheet, Tesla, MicroStrategy, El Salvador is looking to make it a legal tender. Uh, we're just seeing a variety of adoption on multiple hedge funds in Wall Street. Uh, what are your thoughts? And you know, <laughs> given that you were there since the beginning when, no, when people were calling you crazy, right? Uh, and look at where we are at now. Yeah, it's a it's a double sided sword for me. It's mm -hmm. positive and it's negative. Um, for me, it's a revolution. For me, it's a way to disrupt the monetary system as it is, uh, to give an even and equal way of access to a system for everyone on the world, not only for people that can KYC or do that stuff. Mm. And on the other hand, you see that the governments and the rich people are playing the same game uh, th that they played with gold. Sure. You know, just imagine gold, you know, a cowboy riding a prairie, seeing a yellow stone. Wow, I found a yellow stone. Well, I will call this gold. He goes to the village. He tells the village people, look, I found a very special yellow stone and I call it gold. It's $4. And then the community starts to believe the yellow stone. Yeah, that's beautiful. Let's all get to find these yellow stones. They are worth $4 and $4 becomes $40,000 at the end. And during that way, gold was forbidden by governments. And at the end, what did the governments do? And the banks, they said, watch out. People will steal your gold. Mm -hmm. We will be custodial service of your gold. Bring your gold to the bank. We will take care of it for you. We will put it in a safe. Nobody can steal you, we can steal the gold from you. And that same story you can see happening now again. It was us, the people that found Bitcoin. It was us that started to talk about Bitcoin. Everybody got excited about Bitcoin. The bank said Bitcoin is illegal. JP Morgan said if any of my employees will ever touch Bitcoin, he will be uh, losing his job. And now, what are the banks saying? No, 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 we are going to make it very easy for you guys to buy Bitcoin and we will hold your Bitcoins as a store of value in our uh, custodial service at the bank. So they are taking control now on Bitcoin as they sing really took control on gold. And I don't think that is the positive part, but it is the part we need um, to get all those billionaires on board. Okay, people people only only read, ah, Elon Musk uh, puts Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Ah, uh, MicroStrategy puts Bitcoin on the balance sheet. People seem to forget. Still, you hear people saying, ah, but they are going to make Bitcoin illegal. But people seem to forget 
that the only way for these guys to put Bitcoin on the balance sheet, if it is legal possible, if there is a legal framework, who creates this legal framework? The governments. Right. So they are playing a game together. The billionaires, they pay the presidents, the elections. Yep. The presidents do what the billionaires want. The billionaires are saying, oh, the dollar is collapsing. We need to protect our capital. We can't use gold anymore. We need to have something new, which we call Bitcoin. We want to be able to put Bitcoin on the balance sheet. You need to make a table so that we can vote for you to become the new president again. This game is like an ancient game of, 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 of power, you know? And uh, that's what we, are, what we are experiencing now in Bitcoin. Um, and for me, it's still the focus on I, 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 let them play their game. And I will play the game with them because I had I see it as a store of value as well. But on the other hand, I'm still supporting the peer-to-peer -peer cash revolution that gives access to the monetary system and to poor people. So for me, it's a double fight. Um, but in the end, I think we will always fight this and win as a community. For sure. So are you holding any other cryptocurrencies aside from Bitcoin? I know you mentioned you mined some Doge. Any other cryptos that you have in your portfolio? Yeah, I, I always invest in cryptocurrencies that provide a solution that I foresee in the future to happen. So, for example, last year I, I invested a lot in uh, Chainlink because I thought, okay, we will have a moment in the timeline that we have a lot of blockchains and those blockchains will need the data, the offline data that is an SQL or access database. So who's going to connect those databases? And Chainlink was one of the first that said, I'm going to do that. So for me, that was, okay, this is clear going to be a solution. So I have some Chainlink, some Polkadot, of course. Um, paid Network is one of my biggest investments. I really believe this is going to be a very big project. Uh, it already went from, I think, 10 cents to $6 back to now a dollar. Uh, but I think they will grow tremendously. They are also supported by Binance uh, because they are going to completely change the whole legal framework that we have. We don't need a lawyer anymore. We don't need um, all these people in a third parties to verify a deal. And I think that one is going to be really big for the next couple of years. Uh, so, so there's many cryptos I'm, 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 I'm invested in. Um, and sometimes I also, you know, like to play the pump and dump, you know, if there is a coin, a new one, and it's going to explode, I'm like, okay, let's try $200, you know, you know, if it goes times 30, um, that's then six thousand dollars. It's uh, it's nice to uh, to live life of, of course, of to build a school, whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I'm the same. I'm the same way. There, I'm, I'm diversified, and I look for opportunities in the short term. Like you said, that may pump. Uh, yeah. And I'm big on Chainlink as well. I think it's going to do super yeah. uh, great. Um, yeah. I know you're not in the United States, but there's a lot going on in the United States when it comes to regulations. And to your point, it could just be a show because we know at the end of the day, the campaign donations from JP Morgan and so forth will get things done with the government, right? Um, but what are your thoughts on the infrastructure bill and they're trying to tax crypto as much as they can? And, you know, it's, it's just a mess right now, but I think ultimately it will go in the right direction. Yeah, I think it's a lot of, um, it's it's creating a lot of, uh, it's creating a lot of emotions in the market, but it's just a bill. The bill still needs to be passed, I think, through uh, through the house, you know, so, um, and at the same time, they are acknowledging that they will accept Bitcoin as a legal tender in the United States as well, because else you can't pay taxes on it in the way they are talking about it. It's not that they want to destroy or forbid it anymore, because they are including it in their tax system. So it's positive in that way. And the other side, I think, you know, um, for me, it's not that, for me, crypto is not mainly about um, not paying taxes. You know, if a country has tax rules, yeah. I think you need to obey by those tax rules. If you right. don't want to obey by those tax rules, you just leave the country. Let's read it. <laughs> you go to a country that has a 0% tax on Bitcoin, like Portugal. Mm. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's. I, I always, always find, it so, find it like, why are people so interested in what the United States said? You know, they were big. I agree. They were the biggest. They had control. But they are losing that control slowly to Europe, to China, to Asia. Um, does it still matter if they have the bill that, that tells people to pay taxes? Maybe they will drive all the people from the States into other um, countries uh, where they will pay taxes. You know, it's, uh, it's easy for a United States person, I think, to invest in uh, Portugal. I think they need to invest 300,000 US dollar 
and they get a residence and I think they're allowed to cash their Bitcoins here. And I think there are also still multiple ways in, um, how do you say this, in a very tactful way to, to, to make your Bitcoins disappear, you know? It's not that, um, that they are already there, that they can really find every Bitcoin you have, I think. So um, it's a lot of speculation, a lot of game playing, but I don't think they will ever forbid Bitcoin. I think they want Bitcoin to become the 21st century gold. Mm. I want. I think they want to scare people out of Bitcoin because they need to have all the Bitcoins. They all realize, oh shit, there's a dry market in the OTC. We can't buy Bitcoins anymore. Sure, what do we do? Ah, we need to start mining Bitcoins. Okay, so we invite all the Chinese people yeah. to start to mine Bitcoins in the United States. We want to become the biggest miner because we're not able to buy Bitcoin. And they want to have Bitcoin because they understand it's it's more powerful than gold as a tool um, to not only store value, but also control value. You know, because in gold, they still don't know how much gold there is. So for a government to have something like Bitcoin that has more possibilities than gold, but of which they know there's only 21 million, which will take till the year of 2140 to be the last Bitcoin mine, that is something we really can use to control value and to store value. And that is what they start to understand, you know, and that's why they make people afraid. Everybody's selling their Bitcoins now to billionaires or governments. Yeah, I, I, I mean, in total agreement, these are sentiments and, and thoughts I've been sharing on my channel. And the, to your point, a lot of states in the United, United States, they're, they're inviting miners to come set up shop in, in there. And we have power plants, energy plants are using excess energy to mine Bitcoin. So it seems like a Bitcoin yeah. mining boom in the United States. Yeah, that's what I said. Like I said in the CNBC interview a year ago, I said, I told them, I think that the first war is going to be a war on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to invade countries for oil or gas or herbs, you know. Um, when I saw a year ago that Iran, Iraq, Venezuela started to incentivize their power plants to bind Bitcoins, yeah. that was for me the moment I understood, oh, Iran, Iraq, Venezuela, they are going to incentivize mine, uh, incentivize power plants to mine bitcoins so that they can use the bitcoins to do import and export in the future and by that surpass all the US regulations so US sanctions sorry so i think bitcoin is going to be a very powerful tool all over the world and i think that's why these countries are so happily investing in mining bitcoins because that is a way for them to still continue import and export without using the dollar and that's a very powerful tool, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, I want to ask about scaling solutions for Bitcoin, like the Lightning Network. And um, at times, the network can get very busy. The fees can get high. You know, what do you see as a solution? Is it the Lightning Network? I think the Lightning Network still needs to grow. Uh, it, it is doing a ter terrific job, but it's not perfect yet. Um, but in transactions, yes, I think it will be the Lightning Network or maybe now um, because of the tap route that is going live, I think in November huh, this year. And that will make it possible for Bitcoin to do certain same things that Ethereum is now doing. Uh, maybe there will be other solutions, second layer solutions that will make the transactions fee lower. Um, I don't think it's just a problem for Bitcoin, you know, it's even now with uh, the whole NFT world, you know, I'm big in NFTs as well, but if you want to buy or publish or sell an NFT, the Ethereum fees are even higher than the Bitcoin fees, you know, so it's a, it's a common problem we have that I think that will, because the technology is evolving, slowly evolve with it. it just compare it to... The internet in the 90s, when I started to use it, it was like a 56K modem that was like, like this sound, <laughs> dial up, loading yeah. an image, yeah. yeah, loading an image took like 30 minutes, you know, yeah, uh, but it evolved. And at that point, everybody was stressing, but this can never be used because it's not useful when an image loads in 30 minutes, you can't load a website, it's not useful till the internet became faster till we upgraded the speed and then it became very useful. And I think that's the same what will happen with blockchain, with cryptocurrency. We will evolve. The internet will become faster. The fees, the usage will become bigger. The fees will be get lower. And it's, it's just, 
it's just time. It's time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in agreement with you there. We have to give it time to evolve, to grow, and to people to develop on it. Um, you mentioned you're big on NFTs. Is there any Bitcoin family NFTs, any that you've created? There is a few. I think there is a few that was created of us by artists. Uh, most of them are on Rarible, I think. They are selling them there on Rarible. There's one amazing one that's created by an artist called uh, Vesa. I think Vesa is one of the best uh, artists I've ever seen in crypto space. He has amazing paintings. He also has the bad crypto past uh, painting with uh, like 100 uh, autographs of all the famous people in crypto. And um, Vesa is going through some very hard private times. So my shout out is really to him. He has a lot of um, problems at home and I think he can use some support and he's selling one of our if NFTs, which is the most beautiful one I have ever seen. He created a body paint a sculpture of me. So he body painted me in Vegas and that was, was positioned as the Atlas uh, carrying the Bitcoin sign. And that one is now for is being auctioned. So um, if somebody wants to buy something about us, an NFT, I would really appreciate it if you buy that one because this person really uh, can help, uh, needs some help at the moment. So I'll put links in the description to all of that, uh, DD, so folks can go check it out. A um, couple more questions and I'll let you go. If someone was to want to do what you did, uh, you and your family, go all in on Bitcoin, you know, what advice would you give them? And I know it's, it's probably a loaded question, but, you know, any tips that you can give that they, if they want to make this move? Uh, I think the best tip I can give is to lose fear of living life, you know, lose fear of losing stuff um, start to um, challenge, uh, start to find your dreams, start mm. to, you know, create adventures. And if it comes to Bitcoin, people need to understand um, it's a four year cycle. If you buy Bitcoin now, four years later, it will be more valuable. Mm. Every Bitcoin that was ever bought, was four years later was for more valuable. So if you want to do the same that we did, then it all comes up to believing. We just need to believe that Bitcoin will increase in value. So the steps we took was exchange our capital into Bitcoin, change your life to the minimalistic lifestyle so that you can hold as much as possible Bitcoins or hodl as much as possible Bitcoins during the two, three bearish years. And during the bullish year, then just you need to exchange your Bitcoins into a stable coin again and buy the dip again. And then you ride the four-year cycles. Your capital is increasing while you're living life to the fullest and living partly of that capital. For example, if you could go all into Bitcoin now and you could buy three Bitcoins at the moment, <laughs> for example, it's a lot of money. But let's say you can buy three Bitcoins. In my opinion, if you're able to survive the next three years on two Bitcoins, you will hold one Bitcoin in 2025. It will be more valuable than the three Bitcoins today. So for me, you just live a minimalistic lifestyle for two years and then again, repeat that cycle. And if you're not like ballsy enough to go all in, then you dollar cost average. Then you just sell your house, sell all your other materialistic stuff and start to buy Bitcoin every month or every week. You know, we are nearing the bulls cycle top this year in my opinion so at the moment i think you can easily double or triple your capital but then you also need to be able to exchange into a store coin a uh, sort of value or stable coin sorry and then buy back the dip around 30 40k i believe the new i believe the new bottom of this bull run will be around 30 40k <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, you're right. You know, with the four year having cycles playing out, we've seen the value increase um, and like things like the stock to flow model have shown that as well. Um, okay. Final set of questions. And uh, these are rapid fire. What is your favorite food? Nasi goreng with uh, satay ayam. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but I'll look it up. <laughs> uh, fa fa favorite musician or band? Oh, I have so many favorite musicians. If it is up to Bitcoin, uh, Bob Marley. Bob Marley. All, this, uh, all the songs are uh, to Bitcoin for me. Like, don't worry, be happy. Yeah, all that stuff, it's just for me, you know. Yeah, Bob Marley is for me. Yeah. Awesome. I'm, I'm a Bob Marley fan too. Uh, favorite movie? Uh, I think it's oh, also many favorite. Uh, Forrest Gump. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Because uh, that one shows that if when you go with the flow, uh, everything will be all right. 
Awesome. Uh, favorite book? Um, my favorite book, I think if, if I, the one, the first one on mine is the four hour work week of Timothy Ferris. Mm. And this one, my, you might kind of already answered, but you know, when you're not doing any Bitcoin stuff, what are you doing as a hobby for pastime? Um, I love to play football and I think sex is my biggest hobby. <laughs> <laughs> good one <laughs> yeah you need to be honest <laughs> yeah yeah no i appreciate and i appreciate that man. Uh, that is awesome um didi pleasure chatting with you man and i respect you so much for what you did and, and what your family's doing and and uh it's amazing so thank you so much for for joining me today and uh thank you for everything what you do for the community i saw you have 80k followers on youtube you're doing an amazing job you're educating people in a beautiful way i think that's the most important that thing you can do so uh, it's an honor for me to be on the channel and thank you so much for uh, having me and uh, i wish you an amazing day